I can't hear you. Triple pane windows. As you know, Jay, the three biggest sources of heat loss in a home are the windows, the above grade walls, and the air leakage, typically. So we're gonna talk about the windows. We're using a fiberglass window frame. It's an insulated fiberglass window pane frame, and we're using tripane glazing. This is a pretty thermally robust, durable window, readily available in North America. There are several different options for manufacturers that you can use. Some of the important features are to use an insulated frame. And with that tripane glazing, you want a high solar heat gain coefficient. SHGC is, exactly. is how it'll be referred to mm -hmm. on that sticker or the technical information you might be looking up. Solar heat gain coefficient refers to what it sounds like, the amount of the sun's heat energy that will penetrate through the window. If we were building this house in Florida, we might want a really low solar heat gain coefficient because that is a, a cooling dominated climate, meaning it doesn't get real cold there and you're trying to stay cool inside your house, not warm inside your house. But in our part of the world, a higher solar heat gain coefficient, meaning a higher fraction of the sun's heat energy coming through that glass is a real benefit to us in the wintertime. And we can manage that potential excess heat in the summertime with good passive solar design because the sun in the summertime is higher in the sky and the overhangs on this house, on the exterior of the house, are gonna block that high summer sun from coming through the window. So that heat energy doesn't even hit the glass, but the visible light from those long summer days does come through the glass and make this a really pleasant place to be, whether it's winter or summer. This sun in the wintertime is coming into the house, warming the house and keeping the occupants comfortable, but it's also slowed in leaving the house because the glass is the worst insulator in the whole house. Um, but this window is, has about an R value of five. It's in the high side of bad in terms of insula <laughs> insulated value. Insulating value. Yeah. And so taking one piece away and thinking you're gonna get the same performance is a problem. You have to recognize that all of these pieces were essentially engineered together to work for an outcome of better health for the occupants and comfort, better long-term durability, lower energy use, and in fact, such low energy use that all the energy needs for this house can be met by high efficiency, all electric appliances and equipment, mm -hmm. and that means that we have a better chance of, of making all of that electricity needed to power this house on site with the solar panels that are gonna be installed on this roof. Much of the installation of a window in a Green New Deal home is pretty standard fare for just a well-designed, durable, water-managed assembly for window installation. But there are a few things that are notably different and really important. And it has to do with the structure of the home being a two by six structural wall wrapped with about four plus inches of continuous insulation. The place where it really differs <clears throat> is the rough opening mm -hmm. of the window. So we're just gonna have a quick look at this window buck. Um, Part of the um, intricacy of using that nail-based panel, one of the few intricacies of that nail-based panel is how it interacts and how we fasten the window to the structure. So in this case, we're using this, um, this is a ripped two by 12 um, that goes all the way out to the exterior of the house. The buck had to be ripped to the depth of the wall. We thought about trying to make this wall, you know, nine and a quarter inches deep so you could use a standard right. two by right. 10, right. but we needed to follow that R15 rule for our continuous insulation layer right. with a two by six wall. And so just adding up the numbers of a two by six wall with the sheathing and that continuous yeah. nail base panel put us at about a 10 and one eighth inch deep which is right wow. in between the size of a two by 10 and a two by 12. But exactly. again, this is not a challenging operation to uh, rip a, a two by 12 to whatever dimension yeah. it needs to be. Really approachable uh, strategy. 
you know, people think about windows as they are like the separate thing or they are, you know, you install the windows, you install the siding, but they are part of one system, which is the drainage plane. And that has to be positive, which is to mean, which means that the water has something to go on top of the whole, the whole way down the side of the house. This is really critical. Um, and we have a cool opportunity to see how the, um, how the weather barrier is constructed. And this is, they've done a pretty good job here. Everything about the drainage plane is articulated to facilitate the water leaving the building, right? When that water gets behind the siding, um, it's not gonna go into the structure. Um, at the top of the window, you can see the drainage plane is, <clears throat> so that's the blue material. Um, it's overlapping the window nail fin, so that if that water hits that, it's gonna come out and kick out past what you can't see. Oh no, they do have it in. The added metal, flat, uh, head, added metal head flashing has been added to the top of the window. The jam nail fins of the window are taped as well to facilitate drainage down the face of the drainage plane. But you'll notice that the sill window fin overlaps the peel and stick self-adhering flashing that is going up inside, you can't see it, of course, the sloped window sill. And this is intentional and really, really critical. You do not want to tape that bottom nail fin. So what can happen if you, if you tape all the way around the window is it can trap moisture in the assembly. And that's something you really want to avoid. If water gets into the, the window opening, you want to give it an avenue out so it can leave. And water is going to seek the path of least resistance and it'll just drop right out of there. If, if it should get behind there. Um, it's also important to point out that there's that tape that's underneath the, wind, uh, that, that's underneath the house wrap, but sealing the window. Um, that's an important detail, but the most important part of that is that this comes over the top of it. So again, water can come on top of everything all the way down the side of the house. So using a triple pane window is not just about heat loss and heat gain and energy. It's about the comfort of the folks inside. With those three panes of glass, the temperature of that inside pane of glass is gonna be warmer in the wintertime, meaning when you sit next to that window uh, in your living room, you are gonna feel more comfortable. Not, you're not gonna feel like it's drafty. But the other thing that I would say that is just as important has to do with durability and comfort, which is condensation resistance. Triple pane glazing is gonna get a lot less condensation on those really, really cold winter days, which means you're not having to run your air exchanger at quite as high a rate or as often to keep your indoor relative humidity super low. So when we exchange air, it's nice to keep that humidity at a level that humans like, um, as opposed to the level that we need to manage that moisture. So if we can manage that moisture with a more robust thermal envelope, we win. Okay, here's my hat. <laughs>